Hello, folks. Welcome to Cudlow. I'm Larry Cudlow. All right, the die is cast. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has unequivocally declared an impeachment inquiry to deal with President Joe Biden and his family's culture of corruption. The effort will be led by Chairman James Comer at the Committee on Oversight, in coordination with Chairman Jim Jordan of the Judiciary and Chairman Jason Smith on Ways and Means. Mr. McCarthy called an impeachment inquiry an apex of power for the House. Here's what the Speaker had to say today. Taken together, these allegations paint a picture of a culture of corruption. Eyewitnesses have testified that the President joined on multiple phone calls and had multiple interactions, dinners resulted in cars and millions of dollars into his son's and his son's business partners. We know that bank records show that nearly $20 million in payments were directed to the Biden family members and associates through various shale companies. The Treasury Department alone has more than 150 transactions involving the Biden family. That's why today, I am directing our House committee to open a formal impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden. All right, this impeachment inquiry has become necessary because of the politicized Justice Department and FBI. They have blocked and stonewalled House investigators all year. Indeed, they have blocked and stonewalled investigators for many years. The appointment of special counsel David Weiss is an insult to any definition of a fair justice system. He is an integral part of main justice and the Biden administration. But any special prosecutor, including the notorious Jack Smith, should be completely outside of government, not a willing instrument of the White House. Basically, Joe Biden wants to throw Donald Trump in jail for 700 years to prevent the former president from becoming president again. And by the way, that idea of president again is looking increasingly probable, according to numerous polls. The tragic irony here is that Mr. Trump is being indicted for exercising his First Amendment free speech rights, whereas Joe Biden is the one who apparently has broken the law through bribery, influence peddling, bank and money fraud, and other potential charges. Now, I know these are all allegations, but as Speaker McCarthy said today, the evidence of Biden wrongdoing is growing larger and larger. Couple more points on Biden's troubles. The world price of oil has jumped back to $90 a barrel, and the average national gasoline price has increased to $3.84. Meanwhile, a militant United Auto Workers Union may well go on strike against the big three U.S. automakers this Thursday, September 14th. It's a strike for higher wages and benefits, but it would also be a strike against Joe Biden's far-left climate change electric vehicle mandate, which could knock out 500,000 auto workers' jobs and cripple the U.S. economy. Biden has caved into the OPEC Plus crowd of Saudi Arabia, Russia, Venezuela, and Iran by freezing Alaskan and Gulf of Mexico oil. It's an act of sheer insanity. Also breaks the law by sidestepping congressional legislative mandates. And meanwhile, while Biden's budget deficit has spiraled back to $2 trillion, his open borders policy is pushing down wages by flooding the country with illegal immigrants. Hat tip on that one to Breitbart's John Carney. And a recent tip poll shows the 46% of American voters rate the economy as the number one issue, while investigations of the Trump administration ranked 15th at only 8%. Bidenomics has failed. Save America. How about retiring Joe Biden?